Hi guys and welcome to a new Drupal lesson. Today I want to talk to you about the multilingual and internationalization features of Drupal 8 which have been greatly enhanced since Drupal 7. If you are interested in the Drupal 7 video, I'll add a link to it in this video's description. In Drupal 7 it wasn't very easy to create multilingual sites and make all your content and settings translatable. There were too many components that utilized different ways to translate content, and all of these components had too many dependencies, meaning lots and lots of modules that you had to add to your site. Even for experienced site builders, it could be a real struggle to set up those components and dependencies. Before I'll show you how to set your website to support translations, I want to say that Drupal 8 supports a multilingual installation. When you visit the installer, it reads the language code from the browser. With this language code, it will then select a supported language. If you choose a non-English installation, the translation files will be automatically downloaded from localized.drupal.org. Previous versions of Drupal did not support automated multilingual installations. Ok, now I have here a Drupal 8 fresh instance. The Drupal 8 multilingual initiative did a great job and reworked nearly everything that was related to translation. If for Drupal 7 you had to download extra modules from the start, now you have them in core. So let's go to Extend page and search for them. There are four main modules for translations. The first one is the language module. This module is the base service for all modules that deal with the data on your site. Even if you don't actually use translation features, it manages languages whenever you may need them on your site or within your uh, modules. Additionally, it is responsible for language detection and selecting the correct language in which to deliver your translated content and configuration. So, enable this module. Then we have the Interface Translation module. The interface component supports translation of Drupal itself, as it provides all the tools to translate the interface strings, as they were known in previous versions. Basically, this text installs languages and translates strings that are presented through the user interface. Another module is Content Translation. In contrast to Drupal 7's Content Translation module, this handles the translations of all fields for all defined entities on the site. It's similar to entity translation in Drupal 7. It isn't limited to nodes, so it will manage the translation of all other entity types too. And the last module for this example is configuration translation. Every configuration defined as uh, translatable is translated using this component. It makes sure you can translate simple configuration, for example site name, slogan, or complex uh, configuration, such as blocks, views, or field settings, for instance labels. Enable all of them. Ok, now that we have the modules enabled, let's add another language to our site. Go to configuration, then from regional and language group, click on languages. Click add language and select the language that you want to add. Since I'm from Romania, I'll choose Romanian language. At this point, if your server is able to connect to localize.drupal.org, it will start to download the strings for the Romanian language for your interface. If not, you'll have to manually download them. Since I do not want uh, the admin interface translated, I'll just translate those strings that are visible to the normal user. Now click Edit for English language and check the Enable Interface Translation to English box. This way, you'll be able to change the visible strings for English language also.
we also need to check the detection and selection rules. By default, you have enabled the URL method and also the selected language method. You can enable other methods, but for now, this is enough. Back to translation page and click the user interface translation. Here you can manually translate the interface strings. You can also import translation files. You can export the translation strings. Back to Translate tab. Before changing anything, we have to be able to switch between languages. In order to do that, we'll have to add the language block somewhere. So, go to Structure, then Block Layout, and for Sidebar first, click the Place Block button. Look for Language Switcher and click Place Block. Let's move the block on top. Before saving the blocks page, open home page in a new window. See? Search is the first block, and then the language block. Now back to Blocks page and click Save Blocks. Refresh home page. And the language switcher is done. Now let's translate a string. Let's translate the Add Content string. Go to User Interface Translation page and search for it. You have to choose the translation language. For English, we'll add the English word. For Romanian, the Romanian word. Now back to homepage and refresh the page. And the string was changed. Let's check the Romanian language. See? Ok, now for content translation. We can enable translations in two ways. The first one is from the Edit Content Type page, and the second from Content Translation Configure page. Let's go to Structure, then Content Types, and then Edit for Article Content Type. On the Language Settings tab, you have the option to set a default language for a new node and the option to enable translation. For the second way, go to Extend, search for Content Translation Module, and click Configure. Here you can change the language settings for entities. If you check content, a new div will appear with all of your content types. If you mark a content type as translatable, you will also get all of its fields marked uh, as translatable. We do not need all of them, just a few. We need title, URL alias, body, and that's all. Save configuration. 
Ok, now that we've enabled translation for the article content type, let's add an article node and a basic page node. For the article node, you see that you get a new tab, Translate. This one is missing from the basic page node. See? Let's click the Translate link. Here you'll get a table with all of the languages inside the site. You see that the original language of the node is English, and also that for Romanian language, you have not added a translation. Let's add it. Click Add. And let's change the English word to Romanian. Save. So, we are on Romanian language. See the word? Check also the URL. You get the raw language code. Check also the language switcher block. The active link is the Romanian one. Let's click on English. And we get the original node. Easy, right? Content translations are duplication of the existing entity, but tagged with a proper language code. When a visitor uses a language code, Drupal attempts to load the content entities using that language code. If a translation is not present, Drupal will uh, render the default non-translated entity. Now, the last part of our lesson is the configuration translation. Go to Extend again and search for Configuration Translation module. Click Configure. Here you get a list of all configuration items on your site that have translatable text, like your site name, role names, etc. You have two kinds of buttons, List and Translate. Translate appears for simple configurations, while List for um, configuration entities. Let's click Translate for system information. You see that the original language is English. Click Edit. You get the form from the Basic Site Settings page under the Configuration menu link. Go back and let's add translation for Romanian language. Here you get a form where you can change only the site name and slogan. This is because, uh, in code, only these two fields were marked as translatable. As always, add the Romanian string and save. Back to site. For English, we've let the default strings. Change to Romanian language. And there you have the changes. Well, I guess this is all for now, guys. Thanks for watching!